Hello, and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is still true and applicable to our lives. If you would like to know more on what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Matthew 16, 18, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Many have used this verse to teach that Peter is what the church is built upon. We discussed that topic at some length in our teaching titled, The Era of Dispensationalism, from the position that Yahweh would not need to build a second church as he already had one. Today, we are going to take a look at what it means to be the rock upon which the church would be built. Consequently, we will also show why Peter cannot be the rock upon which any church of Yahweh can stand. First, we'll look at how the word rock is used in Scripture. Matthew 7, 24-27 Everyone, then, who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. The rock in this parable is a firm foundation. What a house should be built on, right? So why couldn't Peter be that foundation? Well, let's continue looking. Psalm 78, 35. They remember that God was their rock, the Most High God, their Redeemer. 2 Samuel 23, 3. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God. Isaiah 44, 8. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. Deuteronomy 32, 4. The rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Psalm 94, 22. But Yahweh has become my stronghold, and my God, the rock of my refuge. Psalm 18, 2. Yahweh is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 19:14 Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 95:1 O come, let us sing to Yahweh, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 2 Samuel 22:47 Yahweh lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation. Nearly every reference in Scripture to a rock refers to Yahweh, the Redeemer, or salvation. There are many other references as well that you can look up yourself as you test this teaching. Yahweh is all of those things. Peter is not. We know salvation comes only through faith in the Messiah. Yeshua is Yahweh's plan for salvation. Through Yeshua's sacrifice, we are redeemed. The only way to the Father is through Messiah. We would submit that Peter is not the rock, but that Yeshua is. So, if Peter is not the rock, then what was Yeshua saying in Matthew 16? We believe the Messiah was referring to himself when he used the words, on this rock. There are a number of reasons why we see this as being the most likely scenario. Here are three of those reasons. One, Messiah was the word made flesh, not Peter. Two, the word is the foundation. And three, The Messiah is called the cornerstone. Messiah the Word made flesh. John chapter 1 tells us that Messiah was the Word made flesh, not Peter. Messiah only said and did what the Father said and did. John 5, John 12, and John 8. We have no indication that this is the truth of Peter. In fact, Peter is rebuked by the Messiah for his words and actions on multiple occasions. It doesn't make a lot of sense, even logically, for the church to be built upon a man the Messiah rebuked, rather than the spotless lamb. 
It is through the Messiah that we find our way to the Father. Messiah was our example of how to live out the Torah. We are to live as he did. It doesn't say that about Peter. As the Messiah is the Word in our example, he is our foundation. The Word is the foundation. If we are saying the Word is the foundation, we need to know what it means for something to be a foundation. Based upon the definition found in the Random House Dictionary, here's what a foundation is. The basis or groundwork of anything, the moral foundation of both society and religion. Or, the natural or prepared ground or base on which some structure rests. Number three, the lowest division of a building, wall, or the like, usually of masonry and partly or wholly below the surface of the ground. Four, the act of founding, setting up, establishing, etc., a policy in effect since the foundation. Five, the state of being founded. Six, an institution financed by a donation or legacy to aid research, education, the arts, etc. Number seven, an endowment for such an institution. Now, the first three definitions apply to how we understand it in Scripture, either metaphorically or literally. We see the word as being the basis for how we are to live. It is to be what our faith rests upon, something we guard or keep deep inside the center at who we are. Those are also the definitions that best fit the examples we find in Scripture, such as the parable in Matthew 7, as mentioned earlier. What does this have to do with Peter being the rock versus Yeshua? Well, what do you believe the Creator would want as the foundation of His people? His Word in the flesh? Or a sincere apostle with anger issues that had to be rebuked several times? Yes, Peter was a man of great faith and trusted by the Messiah, but he was not the Messiah. What we don't see in Scripture is the Messiah, or anyone else for that matter, telling us to obey all that Peter said and to live as he lived. We only see that with the Messiah. We also see the Messiah referred to as the foundation directly. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Yeshua, the Messiah. Peter, the rock? As many of you have likely heard before, we too have heard that Messiah called Peter the rock has a play on words because in the Greek, the word for a rock is Petra or Petros. With the verse in question, the name Peter in the Greek is Petros which means a small rock, detached, a pebble. The word the Messiah used for rock is Petra. Petra is a large rock, or an attached mass of a rock, such as a cliff. Well, we can see why many say this was done as a play on words, and perhaps that is correct, it doesn't really support the idea that Peter was the rock upon which Yahweh would build his church. If anything, it actually exposes the opposite. Take a moment to remember that names mean things, especially in that time and culture. Messiah called Simon Peter, which means a small rock, something detached from something larger. Is Yahweh going to make Peter a small detached pebble, a foundation? Can a single detached small stone be what was described earlier as a foundation? The basis or groundwork of anything? The natural or prepared ground or base upon which some structure rests? or the lowest division of a building, wall, or the like, usually a masonry, or partly or wholly, below the surface of the ground? We don't believe so. Yes, the critics, or rather supporters, of such a doctrine would say it's a wonderful example of Yahweh using something small and insignificant to do something great. We understand that perspective, but if we look at the times we've seen Yahweh use something small for something great, did they point to the individual or to his own glory? In all instances we can find, it was for His glory. Using Peter in this way would not be to His glory, but it would make it about a fallible man. In case that's not enough, it should also be taken into account that Messiah and Peter were both Hebrews living in Israel. It's most likely they were speaking Hebrew or Aramaic and not Greek to one another. The Gospels may have been translated into Greek, or maybe even originally written in Greek, but the events that took place pertain to Hebrews not Greeks. The two words for rock and the name Peter do not have the same relationship in Hebrew or Aramaic that we have found. Once again, it would appear that the Messiah is the better interpretation here. Messiah only said and did what the Father said and did. John 5, 19. So Yeshua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
The Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. John 5.30 I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 12.49 For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. As a final note about Peter being the rock, the foundation that Yahweh was building a church upon, Peter was never called the cornerstone. The Messiah was, in Mark 12. Have you not read this scripture, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? In Mark 12, we see the Messiah referencing a passage from Psalm 118 that is talking about the Messiah being the stone that the builders reject, and that stone becoming the cornerstone. This means that Messiah, not Peter, is the cornerstone upon which things are built. Messiah is the cornerstone. For those that do not know what a cornerstone is, a cornerstone of a building is an important part of construction, as it is the first stone to be set and determines the position of all the pieces to be laid afterwards. Cornerstones have been part of a building since the Great Pyramids. Until the development of modern construction, the stone was usually at a corner, possibly as the first of the foundation stones, and it was a real support. So, in ancient times, the cornerstone was a single stone that was the basis for the entire rest of the structure. It was the foundation. This is one more indicator that the proper understanding of Matthew 16 should lay with the Messiah, who is the Word, being the rock, and not Peter. In Scripture, the words used for a cornerstone are very similar, and it is found multiple times. Here are how four lexicons define this word used in the Greek. The head, or a cornerstone, uniting two walls. The head, ruler, lord. The head, literally or figuratively, a derivation from the primary, in a sense of seizing. The head, both of men and often of animals. Since the loss of the head destroys life, this word is used in the phrases relating to capital and extreme punishment. Metaphorically, anything supreme, chief, or prominent. And of things, the cornerstone. As you can see, the place of a cornerstone is very important. The cornerstone is the head, or the head of all the stones. It is the supreme, chief, most prominent stone. If stones had leadership, the cornerstone would be that leader. While some belief systems tout that Peter is the head of the church, we would disagree. If Peter is the head of the church, then he's the head, the ruler, the Lord, supreme, chief, and most prominent. Is that how Peter is described in Scripture? Is the head of the church defined or identified as Peter? Ephesians 1, 20-23 That he worked in Messiah when he raised him from the dead and seated him, the Messiah, at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head, over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Ephesians 4.15 Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Messiah. Ephesians 5.23 For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Messiah is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Colossians 1 he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things are held together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Scripture is very clear on who the head of the body is, and it's not Peter. The head, the cornerstone, the preeminent of everything, that's the Messiah. If that isn't enough, look who the prophets testify about. Isaiah 28:16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, 
I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. Psalm 118, 22 mentioned earlier. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 1 Peter 2. In addition to the Messiah quoting it in Mark 12, it also quotes Psalm 118. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Finally, in Acts 4 and Ephesians 2, Messiah is specifically named as the cornerstone. Further evidence that Peter is not the rock, the stone, the foundation, or the cornerstone upon which the church was built. Acts 4.11 This Yeshua is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Ephesians 2 So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yeshua the Messiah, himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Some may try to use Ephesians 2 to show that Peter is the rock, the foundation. However, as we just read, the apostles, that's plural, and the prophets are the foundation, all of whom are set upon the rock, the cornerstone, Messiah Yeshua. If it was truly Peter who was the rock, Paul would have reiterated that here, but he didn't. We hope that this teaching has blessed you, and remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.